Pokemon Ultimate Adventures by Mike Azuki. Chapter 9 Team Rocket The Second Wave Location Tealville North Exit Foot of Ice Blue Mountain Pika! Pikachu fired a strong bolt of lightning at his target bounding through the tree branches, but missed. Pika! Pikachu! He called to the other Pokemon. Bayleaf aimed her leaf, Totodile opened his mouth, and Cyndaquil fired up his flame. The opponent came into sight, and they all fired their attacks, but missed. Noctowl swooped in an attempt to peck it, but also missed. It was simply too fast. The Pokemon were all sweating and panting. They simply could not hit him. Out of the trees, their opponent came. Come on, guys! What if I was a big bad super fiend? If you can't hit me, you'd be fried by now! Ash saw that they weren't very enthusiastic about attacking their master. Looks like you need some motivation. Well, heads up, cause it's coming this way! He bent over and pulled out a pester ball. All of the Pokemon gasped as the ball hit the ground, releasing the foul-smelling purple gas. All the Pokemon ran as fast as they could out of the gas, covering their noses and coughing. As soon as it cleared, they stepped out, all looking real mad. All right! Ash flew and spun around in the air, dodging every attack aimed at him. He stood up in front of a tree and stuck out his tongue. What's the matter? Can't hit me? Here comes another one! He threw a pester ball downwards and laughed. He then moved, which was convenient, because the second he moved, a large blast of electrified water came and hit the tree, exploding it to bits. Ash flew quickly, and behind him, another tree was hit with a barrage of razor leaves. The tree trunk fell to the ground in pieces, as thin and clean cut as paper. Ash zoomed past three more trees, and the next attacks barely missed him. A tornado ripped a bunch of them off the ground and into the air. They were burned to ashes when a gigantic burst of fire blasted them all. All of this happened in about one and a half seconds. Ash threw five more pester balls at them, and he jumped off the board and stood on a boulder, placing his hands on his hips, looking very superior and laughing. No matter who it is, nobody can beat me! That's why I'm the master! Which, by the way, you can start calling me that any time now! <laughs> Ash! A voice called him. Ash's face went a bit red. He didn't know why, but lately, he'd been feeling slightly uneasy being around Misty. And not once did he not blush when hearing her voice. He turned to her. What do you think you're doing? I'm training my Pokemon! Can't you see? Said Ash. When Ebby gave you the pester balls, they weren't meant to be used like that! Why not? Because pester balls are like tear gas to Pokemon! And if you keep using those things on them, along with them trying to attack you, you'll lose their respect! Lose their respect? Not likely, said Ash, noticing Misty looking nervously at the Pokemon, sweat drop, and dive quickly behind the boulder. Huh? He looked at his Pokemon. He was hosed in the face with a powerful jet of high-pressure water. He was then hit by a blast of fire. A huge tornado tossed him into the air, and a barrage of razor leaves flew into the tornado with him. The tornado was completely drowned out when a gigantic bolt of lightning came down, followed by a gigantic explosion. Ah! Misty was on the ground, her hands covering the top of her head as the rubble fell from the sky. She nervously opened her eyes and blinked. The boulder was gone, and in its place was a large smoking crater, and in that crater was a charred, smoking body that was apparently Ash's. Whoa! Misty sweat dropped, looking at Ash. Um, Ash? Are you okay? Misty slowly approached him, but there was no response. Are you alive? She poked him with a stick. <coughs> Moaned Ash. <sighs> I think that's enough training for today. Now call an ambulance! Huh? Misty? Ash looked up at Misty. She wasn't moving, but she was looking around nervously. What is it? Ah! Ash sprung to his feet, forgetting his injuries, and looked around him. In every direction, 
There were Team Rocket agents. They were completely surrounded. You! A Team Rocket agent pointed at Ash. Are you Ash Ketchum? <sniffs> Ash growled. I don't know. What if I am? We're under orders to take you in for interfering with Team Rocket, said the grunt. So that's it. Team Rocket still hasn't given up, and now you finally found me, huh? Ash smirked. Took you long enough. He started laughing. And just what is so funny? <laughs> you, you guys have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. You just came at the worst possible time. My Pokemon are in a really bad mood. Well, I'm just itching for a fight. Ash crossed his arms. All right then, everybody, go! Location, Team Rocket HQ Branch. All right, you all know why I called you here today. Giovanni spoke. Uh, actually, no, sir, said Team Rocket Elite 002. We haven't been informed, said 003 nervously. It is about 001. He was one of my star agents, and now he's in a maximum security prison! Giovanni punched down on his desk, making the 00 agents jump. Not only was he an elite, he was the strongest, and he was defeated by children! He yelled before calming down. What I am calling for today is to find a decent replacement for him. Agent 009 Domino cleared her throat. You, my next Agent 001? I think not. Giovanni glared at her. None of you are worthy of that position, unless you can show me that you're skilled enough. I might consider putting your names on the callback list. He picked up several pieces of paper. Here is the assignment. One had Ash's picture, the second had Misty's, the third had Brock's, and the last was Ebby's. One of my men faxed me these pictures. He pushed Ash's, Misty's, and Brock's pictures forward. These three are the ones who defeated 001. I didn't quite catch the names, but these particular ones would be easy to spot. The boy with a Pikachu and Pokemon League cap, a girl with bright orange hair, and a teenager with no eyes. He pushed Ebby's picture forward. And their newest member. Be careful. None of them are pushovers. He handed them the pictures. In other news, I will be selecting a Team Rocket agent to be an elite. Depending on how good he is, he'll be given a double O number ranging from 1 to 9. When a new member joins, the highest one of you, he looked at 002, may be squeezed into 001. But if he is good enough, he will become our next Star Elite Agent 001. Not very likely, but within three weeks' time, I will decide. In other news, I have my entire ground combat force and two aerial raid forces attacking the ones who have defeated 001. 003, 004, I want you to assist them, because those forces are only softening them up to the level where you can defeat them. All of the Team Rocket elites left the room, chattering among themselves. Who do you think will be the next 001? Domino 009 asked. I'm probably not going to make the cut. I haven't been in the force for that many years. Who do you think it's gonna be? 005 asked sarcastically and pointed at 002. Number two's gonna be moved. What worries me is if that new guy becomes number one. Oh, come on! 003 pushed his shoulder. It took me eight years just to get a number! Neither Cassidy nor Butch can get a number, and they're some of the best of the regular agents. Although Jesse and James have gotten pretty strong lately, and surpassed their level by a lot, but none of them are even close to our levels. Does that really matter? Even if a newbie joins, it won't change any of our rankings, and things will stay the same. Although if he ends up as the next number 9, then that means we'll be squeezed one level up. 004 pulled out a Pokeball. I've got a flying type, so I'll be in the battlefield first. See you there, number three. 004 grabbed a rope that Firo held in his talons. Firo took off into the air and carried 004. 003 sighed. I've got to get a flying type, or at least a car.